In this lesson, we're going to learn about social bookmarking, or what might also be called collaborative bookmarking. We're going to be using a site called Delicious. Now, if you've already taken one of my uh, technology study groups or another course from me, you may already have a Delicious account. If you already have a Delicious account and you're familiar with how it works, you can skip this video if you want to, or you can watch it in case you can pick up a, a new tip or trick or have a little refresher about something. We'll be using your Delicious account in this course and in other courses that you take from me as well. Now, when you come to the Delicious website, and I don't really know why it's called Delicious, um, it's just delicious.com. The name used to be broken up by strange placement of periods and no .com at the end, but now they've made it a lot easier for everyone to remember, and it's just delicious.com. This is a way to save bookmarks. Instead of saving them on the computer that you sit at, you save your bookmarks to the web so that you can access them from any computer with an internet connection. It's also a way that you can share bookmarks easily with colleagues, with friends, with family members, as well as make connections to other people and learn from what they've bookmarked. Um, for instance, if I have bookmarked something that has to do with um, Apple computers and I find that several other people have bookmarked the same site I might like to look at what their bookmarks are so because if they're interested in that they might be interested in something else that I'm interested in too like iPods or something like that so that's a way that it's social and it's a way that helps you connect with other people or find other resources or easily share resources that you have found when you come to the delicious.com um, website, this is the main page before you sign in. And just to kind of give you a quick tour of this web page and what it looks like, uh, down here it, there are three tabs, fresh bookmarks. So these are the freshest bookmarks that are flying like hotcakes on delicious and beyond, as it says. And these are just some interesting new things that people have bookmarked. Websites, here it lists the website. Here it tells you um, who bookmarked it, what their username is. And then over here, it tells you what they've tagged it with. And we'll be talking about tags in just a minute. And over here, it tells you how many other people have bookmarked this same site. Now, the other tab is popular bookmarks. So when I click on that, it brings up a list of what some of the most popular bookmarks are. Or over here, popular tags. And if I clicked this one, say blog, this tag blog, then it would show me uh, websites that people had marked with that. Um, if you're not sure what tags are, hang on because that's coming. As a matter of fact, the third tab is called Explore Tags. And I'm going to click on that and give you a little description about what tags are. Tags are keywords that people use to describe their bookmarks. And we'll click this learn a little bit more about tags. And this is a little bit hard to see probably in this video, but over here it explains what tags are. It says a tag is simply a word you can use to describe a bookmark. Unlike folders, you can make up tags when you need them and you can use as many as you like. The result is a better way to organize your bookmarks and a great way to discover interesting things on the web. So as an example, maybe I've gone to, um, as an elementary teacher, I found a website, oh, say birchlearning.com. And I was really looking for ELA links and I found some great ELA links on the Birch Learning site. So I might tag it or categorize it or if I'm thinking of folders, I might put it in a folder for ELA. But I also noticed on that same site, there were also some um, good math links, some science links, some social studies links. So it's difficult to take that one website or that one object and put it in just one folder. So that's the beauty of tags. I could take that one website and I could tag it with multiple keywords. I could say ELA, I could say math, I could say science, I could say social studies. It's one website, 
but it has all of these components that might be interesting to me. And then if I was looking for math, it would come up in my search. If I was looking for ELA, it would come up in my search, and so on. So one website could have many tags. Now, it also explains down here what a tag cloud is. And a tag cloud is simply a list of tags where the size reflects the popularity. So if you look over here, right here, this is a, a tag cloud right here. And you can see that at the very beginning, design is the biggest word. So what that means is more things have been tagged with that than have been tagged, say, with uh, games. All right? As you get down the list, you'll see the tags get smaller and smaller and smaller. If I were to click on, say, blog in this tag list here, now I've come up with all the different things that people have tagged with about blogs. So that's how tags are used. When you start using them yourself, you'll get a little bit more of a feel for um, what, they can, what they can do for you. And I'll show you some examples in my account as well. Speaking of my account, let's find out how you create an account and then we'll start to take a little bit of a look at my account. Just going to go back here to the main page. And you'll notice up here in the top right corner, it, by the way, Delicious is free. There's a green button that says Join Now and a blue button that says Sign In. If you don't yet have a Delicious account, you'll click the green tag, the green button that says Join Now, and you'll create a free Delicious account. And I believe that you end up, you have to use an email address and they send you a link that you have to click to finish verifying your account. So you need to use a valid email address when you set up your account. I already have an account, so I'm going to click the sign in button and sign in with my username. Oops. Which is... Lori Birch and my password and there's a little button here that says keep me signed in I usually click that so that I can don't have to sign in every time I want to go to my delicious account it will remember me for a while if you happen to set up an account and then you forget your password there is a link here for forgetting your password and I'm just gonna click Okay, and now I'm logged into my account. Now the main page here doesn't look a whole lot different. I still have fresh bookmarks, popular bookmarks, explore tags, but I can tell in the upper right corner, and it's probably very hard to see in this video because it's so small, it says that I'm signed in as Lori Birch. And what I'm going to do now is click up here on these buttons. There's one for home which is where I am. There's one for bookmarks, people, and tags. I'm going to click on the little triangle for bookmarks and I'm going to click on my bookmarks and now instead of looking at everybody else's bookmarks I've come to um, the section where I have my own bookmarks. These are all things that I have bookmarked. Now if I just gave you my name and I could easily do that if I click let me just zoom in up here. If you wanted to get to my bookmarks, you would just go to delicious.com slash Lori Birch, and you would see all of my public bookmarks. Now, when you do bookmark something, you get the opportunity to mark something as private if you want to and to not share it. And so I have some things like that. Now, you're looking at my account with me logged in, so now you're seeing everything. If you just went to my account on your own without logging in with my username and password, if you just went to delicious.com slash Lori Birch, you would see everything except you wouldn't see these that you right now you can see have a little padlock on them. Okay. Those are things that I've marked as private. 